I would uh, compare us to uh, like a small investment bank for real estate transactions. So, uh, my, my name is uh, Victor Ruben uh, Vandemar. I've been uh, I've been in Spain now, uh, active in the in the real estate sector in uh, in the south of Spain, Marbella, Malaga, uh, for about four and a half years uh, now. I have a background in uh, finance. As an entrepreneur, I started a online trading company. The company that I, I run is uh, Bosque Colina. Uh, and uh, Bosque Colina is, obviously, you speak Spanish, means uh, wooden hill. And that is why, because uh, some of the owners are, are also the founders of the company Wooden Hill uh, in Sweden. Uh, Wooden Hill is a real estate investor slash developer. Been building approximately a thousand uh, dwellings over the last few years in Sweden, based in Gothenburg, but uh, have projects in uh, Stockholm and Norrköping and several different uh, different cities in Sweden. Uh, but we moved down to, to, to Spain, uh, some of the operations through the brand of uh, Bosque Colina to do more or less what uh, Wooden Hill have managed to do very successfully in Sweden over the last years. Uh, and that is to bring a broad knowledge about the market, a lot of know-how in-house to create for, for Bosque Colina, it's been more focusing on, uh, on uh, high-end properties in, in the city of Malaga over the last years. Uh, and that is catering to the uh, obviously northern European uh, market. Uh, we have a lot of clients ourselves from Sweden, but then of course we work with all the agents on the coast to to attract buyers from you know all the usual suspects: Germans, French, Dutch, Holland, uh, you know Belgium. All of these. Your projects at the moment are in Malaga. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. The city. Uh, the Yes, yes. The, the ones that we are doing under our own brand, so to speak, the Bosque Colina brand, that's been focused uh, mainly on, on Malaga. So we have a few projects in there. Uh, we are developing. We bought some of these old buildings in the Central Historical, 100 years old uh, buildings uh, that has huge potential. They're in very great locations, but obviously they need total uh, refurbishment. It's more like a new production, more or less. You keep the facade and, uh, and you blow out everything uh, inside. Why do you guys pick Malaga City? I mean, it's it's. I'm I'm glad that you did, but it's unusual. No, most most Northern European firms that are coming to in the real estate market or the development market here in the Costa del Sol tend to gravitate towards Marbella. Yeah. Why Malaga City? Well, basically, uh, we have our roots. Uh, I'm from Stockholm myself, but the company Wood uh, Wooden Hill, uh, they their roots they are in Gothenburg in Sweden. And Gothenburg is a very interesting city. It's a growing city. It's uh, one of the top top cities in Sweden, obviously after Stockholm. And uh, they have a uh, Gothenburg have a lot of sim similarities to Malaga, actually, because uh, Gothenburg is also a, a harbor city. So uh, before it was a lot of harbor labor, uh, similar to Malaga, but Gothenburg as Malaga has gone through a great transformation over the you know a lot of years. But we see that Malaga has not quite yet been through that development, but it started. So we identify the market in Malaga as a market for the future because it's a city, it's on Costa del Sol. So you have all the weather benefits and the climate and the high quality of life. But we see just now in the last years that the, it's, the city is gaining a lot of traction, both internationally, but also domestically from other cities in, in Spain. So we believe that Malaga is going to be a market for the future where you can live and have the quality of, of life as in Marbella, but still you, you will be in a city. And then Marbella is great. I love Marbella personally. I guess uh, all of us do. But uh, there, I mean, for people that like culture, for an example, there's not much culture uh, in Marbella. Whereas in Malaga, you have the, all the museums and all the history and the, the city is breathing a lot of history going way back to the Romans. So that is very attractive, I think. So you build, develop, commercialize the full thing. Is, is that right? We, we, we contract. So we are, uh, we are more of the higher level. Uh, the, so you're the developer, but not the builder. Is that right? Yeah. We see ourselves as, as the producer. Right. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about the, the investment side of things. I've not really seen any companies positioning themselves as as a vehicle to supply investors with a service of that sort? Well, I mean, our background is uh, in, in 
finance, in entrepreneurship, uh, in startup companies. I mean, our team is uh, based of uh, people that have long, long, many years of experience in, in starting up companies, uh, taking companies public, uh, working with finance, working in banking. So for us, it, it was a natural step or a natural path for us to, to package different investment opportunities and to supply the whole chain. So what we do, we do a very, very detailed analysis of all the projects, obviously, that we, that we invest into. Uh, and for us, it's, it's been a journey where we have analyzed 200 plus uh, projects over the last four years. And uh, that, is, uh, that is the name of the game for us. We're very picky. So we, we look at 100 projects and maybe out of those, we will pick uh, two of them that is uh, interesting and attractive enough to, to actually do it. Is the investor investing in a sort of fund per se, or where you guys then go and, and invest in various different units, or is it a direct investment where you offer them a unit to invest in and they buy it? Just explain that distinction. Yes, uh, we have actually done both uh, both models, and now we are uh, moving more and more into the fund uh, structure of things. Uh, in the beginning, we we more or less identified attractive investment opportunities, and then we packaged them to our network of, of investors. So at that stage, they were investing in the project. Then we set up the, the company structure to handle it. We usually have a holding company or owner company in Sweden. And then we have a subsidiary in, in Spain that is 100% owned by the company in Sweden. And the investors, they, they invest uh, in the company in Sweden. We send the money down and we, we do the project uh, here in Spain. So do the investments go into any projects that are not your own or only your own projects? Well, actually, we, we have uh, several hats on. Uh, we have the developer hat, but we also have the, the, the fund manager hat or the, the financial advisor hat and also the transaction manager hat. So uh, we are uh, actually advising investors to invest in other projects as well. We are also contracted to find specific type of investment opportunities for, for clients, not only Swedish clients, but from several different countries. They have their criteria. Let's say they want to find a hotel to operate and uh, they have this certain budget that they have more or less, uh, they know more or less where on the coast they want to be based. But then we provide the whole package. We give them a very, very detailed market analysis. We uh, look at several different projects. We do the analysis and the calculations for each of the projects, and then we present. So they can pick and choose out of the, the basket of opportunities that we, that we present. According to your analysis, what are the hot areas of investment at the moment within the coast? Are there any particular question. neighborhoods? Interesting questions. Absolutely. And uh, as you know, during the pandemic, Malaga has been, unfortunately, quiet very very quiet it's been more or less dead uh, since march of 2020 when the pandemic hit for real so that that is a pity but uh, we think within the time here in the future the, Ma the malaga market is definitely going to recover but the market that is where it's happening now it's obviously marbella uh, that is uh, that is where we see the the capital flows going through and i don't think that's uh, that's a strange thing because marbella has its own sort of brand internationally Marbella attracts uh, buyers uh, and investors from, I don't know, 140 plus countries, more or less. You have the Russians, you have the Arabs, you have all of Europe, you have South America, North America. I mean, it's globally, globally known as a, as a hotspot, not only for high quality of life, but also to, uh, to investors, real estate investors uh, in the last years. So what we've seen now during the pandemic, and I think uh, you, you could agree with that, is that uh, the transaction volume in Marbella has been obviously lower, but to compare with what's been going on in Malaga and with Marbella, it's two different worlds. Uh, in Marbella, there's still high demand. Uh, I don't think that's strange because the financial politics of the world now, it's been back since the financial crisis of 08, when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt and all that followed. The, the financial politics of the world has been to, to more or less just pump in liquidity to the market. They have uh, been uh, you know, creating money out of thin air for many, many years now. And the, the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, and more or less all of the other central banks have been putting money straight into the system. 
They did it to, to recover the markets after the crash in 08 and 09. Uh, and they did it more or less successfully. If you look at what's been going on in the stock market, we had an incredible bull run, more or less uh, since the recovery. And uh, when the pandemic hit, there was no way for them to turn back. I mean, interest rates, they were already at more or less zero. And uh, to, to, to tackle the pandemic, they had to just keep on doing what they've been doing, but they had to accelerate that activity. So they are pumping in, I mean, ridiculous amount of money in the, in the system, in the markets now. And you can see from the, from the stock market just this year, I mean, we had a big dip back in March, April, but the recovery since then, it's been ridiculous. And if you talk to the, the ordinary people on the street, the stock prices doesn't reflect their life and their view of, of how things are going at this moment. And uh, that is sad because uh, it means the segregation today is much, much bigger than it was a year ago. The, the, the people that had money already, you know, back in 2019, they are wealthier today than they were before the pandemic. While the, the people that had tighter economic circumstances, they, they are in a worse position than they were. So the, the gap is getting more wider and wider. And that is obviously uh, good for the market in Marbella because the, the buyer of a, of a villa for 2 million or 3 million euros in Marbella, he had a lot of money before the crisis and most likely he have more or she uh, more money today. Why? Because the, the, the liquidity that the central banks are pumping into the system, uh, it's going more, mostly into the stock market. Uh, I mean, the Federal Reserve uh, they, and the central banks, they are, they are buying assets directly as well so they don't even they don't let the market go down as soon as you see a dip in the market now they are there today we have a, a small dip in the market actually uh, and yesterday it was a bit volatile and we had a one and a half percent drop in the s p 500 in the afternoon uh, and i i'm pretty sure that if this sort of short-term downturn would would continue now for a few days we would hear uh, the central banks, we would hear the governments talk about new big stimulus packages uh, just to calm the market down. And I think that is, uh, that is how it has to continue because if they, if they would loosen that or if they would tighten that financial, uh, that, that sort of strategy, that politics now, I think the market would panic and no one wants that. So from my perspective, this is something that has to continue and because of that i think we're going to have a, a great bull run in stocks in the coming years and i think we're going to have a great boom in the in the market uh, in marbella but also in the costa del sol but i think it's going to take a bit longer for the rest of the coast to, to go there uh, because it's just crazy amounts of money out there and the money is flowing in in the direction of those that have assets they have stocks uh, and they have these kind of assets that that are benefiting from this politics. So the rich are getting richer. The rich are getting richer. Unfortunately, uh, in the long run, I don't think it's going to hold up. I think it's uh, bound to, to be a systematic change, a huge systematic change. Once the firepower is all used up, I mean, it can't go on forever. But I think we have uh, something like five years ahead that that's going to be an incredible bull run in, in stocks and uh, also in, in real estate. So anybody that's forecasting in the next 12 months or so that the markets are going to, are going to, the real estate market is going to be hit very heavily by the consequence, the economic consequences of what's just been, what is still happening. You would say that in the, in the higher end sectors of the real estate. So where the, where the, where the buyer is more on the, on the wealthier side of the spectrum, that that is probably, in your opinion, not going to be the case because the economic effect is more on the mid to lower range income brackets. Is, is, yes. Have I understood that correctly? Uh, exactly. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And that is, that is about, that, that is Spain. Uh, in Sweden, for an example, we had a great, great year in real estate, uh, 2020. The, the market for uh, individual homes, it's been going up like this, I think in, Villas, it's been an increase in 10% 10, 10 in price during 2020. And also apartments uh, have been going up. We've seen that 
in many of the countries where the real estate, certainly what we're talking about the, the coastal resorts of Spain, so the Costa del Sol, Costa Blanca, where where a large a large percentage of the buyer is a is a second second home buyer, even the national mm-hmm. market, a, a, a large percentage of them are are, are uh, it's a holiday home as opposed to primary residence. One of the one of the things that is getting a lot of conversation at the moment because of the changes to working practices and perhaps yeah. those changes aren't so marked within the the, the luxury sector or the higher end sector is the blurring of the lines between primary and secondary residences because of the working from home aspect mm-hmm. where it doesn't really matter that much where you are as before. And that, that's perhaps where places like Malaga and the Costa Sol generally, which has a very good communication with the rest of Europe and has the mm-hmm. climate and is in the, on, the, on the same uh, time zone, that that will actually support the market and improve it on its, on, on its own accord. Do yes. you see that sort of thing yourself? Uh, definitely. Uh, I've noticed it uh, among friends, uh, among investors, among buyers uh, during the last year that uh, my, my wife, for an example, she's a, she's a web, web developer. She worked for uh, one of the huge uh, US uh, companies, but she's employed in Sweden because they have a subsidiary that they bought uh, in, in Stockholm. And uh, she, she's, uh, she's been working from home ever since she started. She, she started uh, a few months ago. She's, she met her colleagues once, I think, at a Friday drink in the city, right. not even for work. So right. uh, that, is, uh, that is something that's going to accelerate, I think, as well. Because this video meeting kind of thing, it's, it's really working. It's effective. Now I'm, I'm in Sweden and you're in Spain. I mean, it's, it's perfect. We can do this. Yeah, yeah. It makes, makes no difference, does it, no, mm-hmm. nowadays? I think the time zone is probably the only, the only thing, isn't it? You know, if yeah. someone's on, in, uh, in Uruguay or somewhere, it might be a bit tricky to catch up with people in Europe at the right times. But uh, that's that's always been the case, even with stock markets, where people have to wake up at three in the morning to, to yeah, get exactly. in time for the Nikkei or whatever. So when you said that the the hot areas for for investors would continue to be Marbella, and in the medium term, when recovery comes back, you know, Malaga is, is is a very interesting prospect. Are there any specific areas within Marbella you've identified as particularly hot or or next to Marbella? You know, you decide it's Tepona, Mijas Costa. Is there anything, any info that you can give us from your studies? Marbella, Marbella, if you look at uh, Nueva Andalusia, where all the Swedish people tend to be, uh, among others, of course, uh, that is obviously very, very hot. But the market has been going up for quite some time and it's been going up, it's been rising quite aggressively. So uh, it's it's not easy to get a, to get in a foot and make a good deal there to invest. Uh, however, we've been noticing now uh, in the in the effects of the pandemic that some some buyers uh, some sellers sorry are uh, are more motivated to sell. Uh, and now with the second or what is it third lockdown uh, going on, uh, most likely there will be opportunities in the uh, Nueva Andalusia market, and that is a market where you where you can sell quite fast because demand is high uh, there. But also, uh, I would say that uh, Benavis is very interesting. Uh, the area of La Quinta, I've uh, noticed uh, high demand from uh, North and South American buyers uh, in La Quinta. Uh, but also, if you go up in the mountains, the neighborhoods of El Madronial and also La Sagaleta seem to be going through a bit of a re- rebirth uh, in some way, because before it was a lot of old money up in La Sagaleta. It's one of Europe's uh, most exclus- exclusive urbanizations. But uh, now when there is so much money in the market and this new, the new era of tech billionaires popping up here and there, uh, there's so much money so that we, we, we see a high demand uh, growing in, in areas like Sagaleta as well, where, the, where we talk huge, huge uh, investments and the purchase prices are, are very, very high. Uh, so I would say the the best market, if you can find an opportunity in Nueva Andalusia, it's a great it's a great uh, investment. But you you work with other you work with estate agents. We do, yeah. What, yeah. What's your relationship with them? So I, I understand that. I love those guys. They're so positive. Yeah. <laughs> but do you work mainly with uh, with Scandinavian estate agents or or with everybody? No, we 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 try to work with. Uh, I mean, we have we have uh, contact with all of them. I would say. Uh, personal contact in one way or another, uh, but uh, we are 
of course, the Swedish ones and the Scandinavian one, uh, ones, we maybe we know them a bit better because they have the same culture and we, we've been talking to them uh, more. But there is uh, international players that I think are very, very good. They do a great job and uh, they, they have a broad network that the Scandinavian players most of the times don't have. Uh, so, so we we are we are when we do a project now, for an example, we are looking to invest in Marbella. We're looking at several projects uh, at the moment, and we're we're raising we're raising funds uh, to to execute on them. Uh, and then we we will pick uh, one one agent per project that will be involved. We we prefer that the agent actually is investing with us a little bit, nothing big, but just to get some skin in the game. So that we know that they are 100% committed to to do their best and get as much as possible uh, out of the sale. So you'll be so you're you're raising the funds for a project in Marbella. What sort of is it? The sort of do you have a thing in mind, a particular kind of project in mind? Whether like it'd be a villa project, for example, or yes, yes. We notice now that the villas they are they are the most hot hot ones. Uh, the buyers, as I mentioned before, the buyers for these products above two million euros. Two million euros and above. They they are. Are you looking to invest in an existing product uh, development or in or build one as a developer? Actually, at this point, we are raising uh, we are raising funds uh, to not for a specific project, but to to have dry powder in the in the bazooka. So <laughs> we will, and we are all we are always scanning the market for for good opportunities, but. Uh, Ideally, in a market like this, because it's moving quite fast, when, when good product hit the market, uh, they are selling fast if it's good. So it's very important that you have, uh, you can act right away. So you have the, the funds ready to, to move yeah, as soon exactly. as it becomes available.